we've been going through the extending of Microsoft Viva Connections uh, uh, learning path, uh, which is available from the from the Microsoft Learn. Uh, if you go HTTPS or HTTP, aka MSM365 uh, Dev and Learn, um, you will find the extend Microsoft Viva Connection and. And that really is focusing on three different uh, topics. It focuses on uh, extending the Viva connection from a web part perspective, from a uh, application customizer perspective, and then using the adaptive card extensions. Uh, so relatively simple scenarios um, and simple implementation style, but actually super powerful. So it really shows how to get started from a scratch and from nothing and understanding what you can do as a starting point. And then of course you can extend uh, from there using the documentation and tooling and some labs and samples and all of that's what is available. So within the past two weeks, we've been going through uh, the first we did AC, so adaptive card extensions, then we did web parts, and now we're going to the application customizers. And that's basically the last piece from this learning path. Uh, and then uh, next time we'll talk about something else again, um, but not the, not about the, not from this learning path. So uh, what we basically have already agreed with the cloud advocates like Waldeck is that we'll, we'll start covering more and more learning paths in this uh, two cycle because it's beneficial for community to know um, and see this uh, also actually in demos as well. Now, first of all, just a reminder, uh, Viva Connections Toolkit is already generally available. So that was released a few weeks actually before Ignite and then week after Ignite, which is a bit of a weird timing, uh, the Viva Connection mobile went to GA as well. So Viva Connection is already completely uh, GA and available for anybody to take advantage and no additional license is needed. So the Viva connection uh, is basically a capability where you are exposing the corporate communicational intranet or the SharePoint inside of the uh, mobile and, and a desktop and uh, potentially an, a, a tablet uh, scenarios. Now, from these scenarios, from these three different or two different uh, main kind of a differences, uh, there are a few differences. So there's three, three different extensibility options. So you can use uh, web parts, application customizers, and adaptive card extensions. Adaptive card extensions are for the mobile experiences, um, and they, those are being rendered in a native mobile uh, uh, way using the native mobile framework. So it's super fast and it's targeted for mobile usage. Now the web parts and application customizers, these are similar kind of things what we've been having uh, in the SharePoint in the past as well. So we're building on an, an existing extensibility model. So if you've done application customizers or web parts in SharePoint online, you will know how to do them, of course, in the, in the Viva connection as well. Huge. So learning objective of today. So we, we will go through basically uh, the learning path, uh, sorry, the learn, mo learn module, because learn path is the, all of the four different modules, and today we're going to use one module. Uh, when we're going to actually go through how to extend the VR connection desktop with the application customizers. So application customizers can be used in the VR connection desktop experience, but not in a mobile experience, because mobile experience is all about adaptive cards. Uh, so we're going to create and deploy and test the custom application customizer in the Viva Connection desktop uh, throughout. Now, quick introductions. So basically, um, after the Viva Connection has been enabled, um, that's by the way also covered in the learning path, how to enable Viva Connection, what do you need to do, enabling the global navigation, settings in tenant admin, how do you deploy the stuff in the Teams admin UX. After that has been uh, then enabled, um, you might want to actually extend the Viva Connection in a way that you want to actually inform, for example, your employees with some data or information or notification. Um, and typical scenario for application customizer, especially if it's a visual application customizer, would be something that we want to have a reminder for employees that there's an important company announcement or something to follow up. Uh, and you want that to be visible for every single employee all the time until they will basically click and do the, whatever is being asked them to do. Application customizers could be uh, used on that. So how would we actually then do this? So first of all, uh, the Viva Connection desktop experience is backed by SharePoint. Um, and nowadays, you will see us talk about more and more Viva Connections because, hey, it's a cooler name than SharePoint. Don't quote me on that. But still, uh, it's it's one of the, the kind of a repositioning uh, where 
Viva is uh, being promoted uh, more and, and the SharePoint is still in the contact site and content services behind of the scenes. We're using basically a SharePoint home site, which is the one which has been then exposed through Viva Connection Desktop inside of your Microsoft Teams application. So making sure that you can easily access the information directly from desktop or from the mobile experience. And as noted out over already there, application customizers only work within the Viva Connection desktop experience. They won't show up in a mobile uh, Viva Connection app. So good to be aware of that. Uh, again, the mobile application only supports applica uh, sorry, uh, adaptive card type rendering. So that's really important to understand. Now, application customizers don't have to have a UI. So there might be something like you want to have, for example, let's say Google Analytics or some other analytics tooling, which is tracking the user view. Uh, Google Analytics is quite a typical scenario for this stuff. To be fair, there is a free um, a similar kind of version coming from Microsoft as well, which is, what, what is it called, Waldeck? I know what you mean. I have it. Yeah, exactly. The, this is the moment on, when we should be promoting our own company products. Yeah. You know. Not Google Analytics, the better one. The not App Insights. Uh, yeah. It's also yeah, it's another thing. <laughs> okay. No, anyway. not 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 App Insights. Not App Insights. We'll look, yeah. no, we'll look it up. <laughs> cool. Now, uh, but for that scenario, <laughs> so um, that that would be a good example of we want to embed something analytic scripts uh, on the basis to analyze what's happening, and then uh, there's no UX which we're rendering. Now, application customers can actually have also. <laughs> also, uh, UI elements, so they can actually claim uh, positions uh, on the on the UI, which is being exposed inside of the Microsoft Teams as a Viva connection. Um, and right now, we've been waiting for get more placeholders quite a long time. Uh, it is still in works, um, but right now we still have one placeholder in top, one placeholder in bottom. So basically a kind of a header section and then a lower footer section uh, where you can embed uh, extensibility uh, on that side. And thank you, Christian, it is Microsoft Clarity. Uh, you are absolutely correct on that. Thank you for helping us <laughs> see. <laughs> As a Microsoft Unity. employee, I guess we should know about this stuff, but hey. We, so. you, you, you cannot know everything. You cannot know everything. Now, for the application customizer, as a developer, we define the position of an application customizer. And this is a, the, really the big difference between application customizer and extensions versus the web parts. So the web parts are being uh, modified and configured and adjusted by the content editors. Application customizers are something which is being looked uh, kind of hooked or locked uh, in the site in a certain shape or a form, and the, the end users cannot get rid of them. So they're basically locked in uh, uh, from that perspective. They're actual code, so it's a developer experience. Now, you might actually think about this, uh, if you think about SharePoint framework extensions, that what's the difference, for example, um, these extensions versus some of the configuration options, what you can do uh, in the lists, because extensions technically, not just if you step out away from the application customizers, you can do list of customizations, but that the difference is really the fact that when it's SharePoint framework, it's code and it's developer created, developer associated, not end user or site editor configurable. So that's where the differences really are. Um, and editors cannot get rid of them as such because they are basically locked uh, to be available on the site. Now, uh, site administrator configure application customizers potentially, uh, so there might be limited configuration capabilities. There are a few different options how to make this happen, uh, uh, either centrally from the tenant scoped or, or then in the site level. Now, in general, a recommendation is that you would build application customers if you want to add code to all pages in the Viva Connection desktop experience. So something which is visible all the time. It could be like a header master navigation. If you don't like the out of the box one, it could be a master footer. It could be a notification. It could be something which is detecting that, hey, you are the person who sh who's located in this particular location and you should be doing X and Y and C today. Um, you go there and make that happen. Just a reminder, personalized reminders, for example, in the Viva desktop experience, or you haven't, hey, you haven't actually completed your mandatory training. And uh, that happens actually a lot in the Microsoft. We're getting those reminders all the time. At least I do, uh, because I never remember to do them. Uh, so the, a reminder for me to actually follow up on, on those trainings. Now let's actually create one of these uh, from scratch. And uh, we do have well nicely time today. Uh, so I will start actually from clean command line uh, and we'll move into the right location. Let me pump up the font a bit and let me go to my uh, PMP location. 
uh, everybody has a BNB location, right? Of course you do. Yeah, and let me actually start from here. Let me a quick shuffle things so I can see uh, the code which Waldek has written. I'm just executing his code, so it makes me feel that I'm actually capable of writing code out of fly. Am I? Oh yeah, and I guess that for away? me it is it it is an ultimate test. Like, can I write code that anybody else can run? <laughs> yes, or I Will can it run. run There's a different yes. than mine. Can a PM run your code? Now, uh, basically, what I'm doing here is that I'm uh, oh, running a <laughs> human generator, uh, which is the creation of our SharePoint framework or Viva Connection project. So we start the creation uh, of our project structure. And let's actually use the values what our documentation is, is giving us to use. So I'm going to use say, an SPFX company announcement application customizer as the solution name. Um, and then it's going to ask me, this is a relatively stupid question right now because uh, and we're going to chop it into 1.14 um, uh, version um, but we only support SharePoint Online anymore with Human Generator. You will need to use an older version of Human Generator if you're targeting SharePoint 2016, 2019 or subscription edition. So we're going to use that one and we're going to use current folder because I already went to the folder where I want this to be created and then uh, for these we're not going to deep dive on the settings but basically we're not going to have a tenant deployed and a not unique API permissions. So not a super security, uh, but uh, a normal security level still. Uh, we're going to create an extension, and we're going to create an application customizer, and we're going to give it a name uh, like something uh, meaningful. Technically, this is not visible from the UX because, again, a developer makes the decision where the application customizer is being placed. So the UX doesn't really matter that much, um, uh, or these descriptions doesn't matter that much, but hey, uh, it's good to have them in the package. Now it's going to create the solution. Uh, it's going to create the, the package um, and for us. And as it's doing that, let's actually have a look on the setup. So if you followed up on the last two weeks uh, on our uh, journey on implementing and doing extensibility uh, with Viva Connections. So first of all, we have here relatively simple Viva Connection layout. So we have a Contoso personalized logo and a name. So you can personalize the Viva Connection based on your company. And then we're using super simple uh, uh, communication sites uh, as a starting point. But we have enabled the dashboard here already. And we have actually one uh, announcement list. Uh, which is created for just the mimicking information, which could be important for the employees. So we have a one completely mandatory trading uh, uh, information available, and then another news. Now, if I go back in the in the home, we can see that we have the ACE, which we have implemented in here. ACE being the adaptive card extension component. Um, which could be then exposed using the mobile experience. And then we have a custom web part, which is visible here as well. Now, today we cannot create an application customizer. Again, if you're super familiar with SharePoint framework, there's nothing really unique or new in here, except that now we're inside of the Microsoft Teams, which makes that then as a Viva connection experience. So, and the cool thing about all of this one, again, just to recap, there's no license cost to know nothing. You can just embed uh, the SharePoint online portals and modern portals directly in here. This doesn't look actually super impressive, but again, if you're looking into doing a super impressive portals, uh, I would still recommend using the SharePoint lookbook. And there from here, you could use something like the perspective as a starting point and then enable that to be the welcome page and then add the, desktop, the, the Viva Connection dashboard and all of those experiences in here. But let's go back on our boring site. Uh, we should have actually made it a bit more flashy. Maybe not. The flashiness is always, it's, it's, it might be confusing as well. Now, let me go back on the command line. Uh, we can see that our solution has been created. And let me actually open up a Visual Studio Code and we'll start doing some coding. Well, actually not, because remember to read the manual. The manual says that we need to run one npm install command. So let me go back in command line and let me add okay. a SP Office uh, UI Fabric Core. So I won't be wondering why isn't it working afterwards. See? Exactly. The manual. So why do we need that? So we kind of use this one uh, for styling purposes. Um, as we're rendering UX level information, uh, we will take advantage of styling elements from the SP Office UI Fabric Core. It, it gives us a styling uh, colors and uh, style definitions, which we will use in our implementation. And what's happening and here why is- Why isn't it? Yeah. And why isn't it available already for us? 
So why isn't all of these available already? Um, it's not available because we want to make sure that if we're not using that, we do not increase the page size. So basically, we want to make sure that the package and the JavaScript component, which comes out of transcompiling the TypeScript, uh, is as minimal as possible. So when people are accessing the page, for example, through the Microsoft Teams and, and from other areas, it will not be critical. Uh, well, it will not be too big. Now, I, I got confused because I'm reading the critical the messages there. Now, by the way, on the on these things, that's actually a good point for uh, test from Eric. Every now and then you might see this. Uh, we are, of course, closely following up on this. Quite often, as you're seeing, for example, in this case, the three critical, these are not critical in runtime. So they would be critical in runtime if we would be running server-side code, but not when we are running client-side code after transcompiling the TypeScript to JavaScript. And th those are the kind of the differences. And these are really hard to do kind of a spot and, and understand. But from our side, from Microsoft side, we're of course following up on what's happening in MPM, which is by the way owned by Microsoft nowadays as well, which is pretty cool. Now, or GitHub, but then Microsoft owns GitHub. So it's complicated. Cool. Now we are actually in the in the Visual Studio code. I'm watching the time. We have plenty of time. So this is good. Uh, so no rush today. So uh, we already have the basic Famous setup. Has words. Exactly. That I know what's <laughs> happened. So no rushing and then running out of time. Now, what we basically have here is a SharePoint framework solution uh, and uh, a basic layout and a structure uh, and a baseline setup for application customizer. And we're going to a bit modify this one. So we will. Uh, we will basically make it available and more structural um, and make those placeholders. So we're going to put a header placeholder on the page as we're rendering the page uh, inside of the Viva connection. So I'm going to follow up on the guidance. I'm going to modify the SP application page. We're going to take placeholder content and placeholder name from there. And those are needed as we're pointing out to a location in a page. And we're going to render some JavaScript in there. And then uh, we want to access the information from SharePoint online. So I'm going to add a additional import, which is sbhttp client in here. And then we're going to start actually a bit of implementing uh, the code. So inside of my class, that's my actual class. That's the actual uh, TypeScript implementation of my application customizer. I'm going to add an internal uh, variable uh, so we can then store the top placeholder in here pretty soon in the code. We're going to actually add a on init, or we're going to modify the on init a bit. So there's our on init, which right now it is showing a dialog with hello world on something. That's not super interesting. So let's actually modify the on init completely. So we're going to actually add a change event at render placeholders. And this is basically um, making sure that whenever we're moving across to different UX uh, elements and partially loading the pages, um, our render placeholders is getting rendered uh, properly. And uh, what we then need is the actual render placeholder. So let me actually grab that one uh, from the code and paste that one in. That was a super fast implementation of the you code. Like so, so fast. Yes. Nobody was able to even see that coming. Now, what we can see here, let's have a quick look on, on what's actually happening here. Uh, and what are we actually doing here is that we are uh, taking an instance of the top placeholder. So there's a, in the HTML structure, in the base structure, there's a location where we can inject our custom experience. That's what we're doing here. If for whatever reason uh, it is not found, we, we're just locking an exception on the browser console. As we found it, or when we find it, we're actually calling an REST API from the announcement list and finding a news where the important field equals one. So basically a news article where the, where, it is important enough to actually get shown for the end users. And then as we get that announcements to be available, we are adding a implementation or LIUL uh, HTML structures uh, based on that information. Now, something what we can see actually here already is that we can't find styles. And this is basically what's still missing. We didn't, we took a dependency on that Office UI Fabric element, but we didn't actually implement anything with that. So let's actually go back in uh, uh, on the solution structure and let me create a one new file in this folder. And there we go. And let's name that as an important company announcement uh, SCSS. What is that shortening for? I can't, I can't never remember that. SAS. It's SAS. SAS. Yeah, but what does the SAS actually mean in English? Never mind. Okay, fine, fine. 
What does it mean in English? It's just a word. HTML is is a has a actual word behind of the cascading style, style style sheets sheets. Yeah, CSS. Yes, but then S CSS. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> sassy CSS. Sassy CSS. Okay, there we go. Good. So that's good to know. So that's that's what it is. Now, what we're doing here basically is that we're defining the styles uh, for the components as we're getting rendered um, for these sassy uh, components uh, as they're getting rendered in the UX. Um, and now we have the definition of the style. Uh, and then in the code, uh, we will still need to get an import to that style. Uh, so I'm actually add an import on this page. So, and that basically means that we will get that one into uh, use. Now, did I name that actually properly? Uh, yes, I did. So it's just not yet compiled, so I can't find it. So that's fine. That should be okay. Even though it's actually doing that as we start bundling stuff, uh, it can find what's available. Now, what we can do now uh, is that we can actually start testing. I'm just double checking that I saved, saved, saved everything because that's my uh, always the thing. Why isn't that working? Well, you do not save the file. So what I'm going to now do is that I'm going to write here cop serve uh, dash dash no browser. There's a few ways of doing this. Um, now we could actually do here a config uh, configuration options as well and launch uh, options. So actually from here, how we are testing this extension. There's a few different ways of doing that. We're going to do this in a, in a super simplistic way. Uh, we're going to actually oop, not double. What am I doing? There we go. When your keyboard doesn't have characters in it, you never know what's going to hit. So additional complexity, you know, making it easy for yourself. <laughs> Level two. <laughs> yeah. So what we're going to do now is that we want to basically test out uh, this uh, component in a live page. So we're rendering that from a local host and we're going to test it out uh, from a live page. So I'm going to actually start a notepad. We're going to do a bit of a, a modification here. Uh, in the guidance, uh, it actually says, now again, there's a few different ways of doing that. We could actually go to the serve JSON and we could have been actually doing this not using the, the let's say, classic URL manipulation. But it says that go to the home ASPX page and then you need to update this ID accordingly so that it will actually start loading what Whatever we have in the local host. Where do we get that ID? Well, we get the ID actually from our application customizer definition. And so this is the manifest file of our component, and that's the unique ID. Quids uh, are actually not unique, but that's a separate discussion. Let's not actually go there. But they're quite unique, but they're not completely unique. Um, what does the stand the U in good for? Yeah, it, it, it's actually this stance that unique. Would be unique, but it's not actually. There's, a, there's an interesting studies on that, uh, so how they're actually being resolved. So they're Already not technically for, for someone else unique. to have the same one, right? Yeah. Now um, I'm going to save. Uh, I'm not going to save that, so that's no reason to doing that. Uh, I manipulated the URL, and let's actually go back in our browser, and let me go on the the SharePoint side of the house, so we can actually see the same page without uh, the team shell, so we can more easily actually then extend uh, this uh, URL. So what I'm doing is that I'm pasting that massively long URL, which in practice says, hey, SharePoint, as you're loading the home ASPX page, and there's a debug manifest available from localhost temp manifest JSON file, please load that, and there should be a component called that ID. And that's what actually is happening here. Uh, and as we start loading that, we're telling SharePoint that, hey, you should load the local host. And it's, it's then SharePoint is basically, hey, are you sure that you want to do this? And in this case, um, as we know what we're doing, we can click load debug script. If you do not know what you're doing, click here. That's a super descriptive uh, answer. But something has happened on the page. And as we can see, uh, I was able to successfully copy paste the code <laughs> from the <laughs> from the material. Achievement I'm not unlocked. Claim that I, exactly, I'm not going to claim that I wrote the code. Uh, is that we actually have complete your mandatory training by December first? Uh, is as a reminder here. Of course, it could have a link to the to the training. It could have something else and a more complex scenario available. But technically, it is now loading the same entry as this web part uh, from the announcement is loading. Uh, from the list, so, and it's exposing that into top header. It could be much more complex, but in this case, quite simple headers definition. Good, so that's working, awesome. So how do we now get this one uh, then deployed? Well, 
it's not actually too hard. Um, that's the beauty of the SharePoint framework because everything is auto-hosted. Um, Microsoft 365 hosts hosting everything for you. So let me actually go back in the command line. Uh, that's a command line. This is a command line. So I'm going to terminate my patch job. I'm going to do some cleaning. And we're going to do call up uh, bundle dust ship. And that's going to basically transcompile. It's, it's a fancy word, but basically it's the, trans, uh, the TypeScript is getting now uh, transformed to be JavaScript, which then uh, the browsers understand um, so that the browser doesn't do, have to do any runtime transformation of the TypeScript. So, um, so TypeScript is a developer time experience. JavaScript is the output uh, from that TypeScript. And then uh, that's now basically uh, getting ready. And my assets are available to get deployed. They're actually in that dist folder over there. We're not going to, no point actually opening up about that one. Uh, but now I'm going to do call uh, package uh, solution and that's the ship it. And that's going to then take the dist information and my solution definition and everything else and create that to be an SPPKG file, which we last time already said, uh, SPPKG file, which is now named in here. It's actually a zip file, but it's so much cooler to name it as an SPPKG file rather than a zip file. So Exactly, and have your own extension, right? Of course. Because zip is so That's boring. Really so now if I go and open up my file explorer, uh, in my 4K uh, screen, so that's is a pretty. I can't even zoom it in the right level. Can I? Can I? Uh, there we go. Okay, here we go. Now you can probably say something in the follow solution structure from here. I can go to the SharePoint. <laughs> now it's again small. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Uh, and we can see my SPPKG file uh, available for me to get it installed. So the cool thing again, I can send that to anybody in email that they can just install that to our tenant and it actually works as long as the list is available. Attachment blocked. Yeah, in this case, it would be <laughs> indeed attachment blocked, but, but again. Now, let's get that one installed to the tenant. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Waldek, for keeping me honest. Uh, so... <laughs> So let me go my uh, Mike's uh, SharePoint Online app catalog, which luckily is getting modernized, and this is so outdated. Uh, but basically, it's an administrative operation, uh, so it hasn't been yet got too much love, but it's going to get more uh, love in the future. Now, or there's people actually already working on the modernization on all of this. Now, this is the app catalog for SharePoint Online and for Viva Connection, because again, behind of the Viva Connection, we're using SharePoint Online as the engine. At some point, you might actually ha have uh, maybe Viva Connection app catalog and abstraction of this and, and a few things. There's this an interesting uh, designs and plans in the roadmap uh, for all of this, but let's not go too much detail yet on that because uh, things have not yet been decided. So I'm going to install that component, uh, SVPKT file, which is actually a zip file, but hey, and to my tenant, we're going to track and drop that to the app catalog. It's going to then prompt uh, that, hey, so you need to be administrator, you need to understand, don't just take random examples from the internet and just put it in your tenant running. Um, What's wrong with that? Uh, to, the, to the tenant. There we go. Uh, <laughs> yes, why, why, why is that? <laughs> just take the JavaScript <laughs> file and put it in your tenant. What's wrong with that? Now, as we can see, and uh, that's the component, and we can see that it's deployed, um, and more importantly, there was no package uh, there errors, so we're basically good to go. So, now we're going to install that to our site. So, let me go back in the SharePoint site. I will go to site contents. We already see two components being installed, which are actually, again, can we actually get the full name? No, we can't. We can't. Uh, it says Ace client side component, and this one says Web part client side component. But now I can add the third one, which is the application customizer. So I'm going to, going to add an application. <sighs> no, this is actually really good. Uh, so we're hitting this because there's a cached entry related on the local host definition, which we were playing around uh, in here. So this might happen. Um, but this is this is a bit of a, a annoying thing. Let me go back in the home. So we it's can like in actually, our docs, we have instruction to turn it off. Yes, you do, you do, you do. And I forgot about it doing that. Read so the easiest way uh, to actually clear that is at a, a, a parameter reset uh, equals true. And in the docs, it actually says that, but I, I skipped that. So I didn't, I, you know, why would you read and the And that is now? what you get. 
Exactly. Then you get surprises. Uh, luckily, I've, yeah. I've seen this one before. So now let me do this one more time. Uh, let me go new and add an app. There we go. Now it's working properly. Uh, I can go to from my organization, uh, which basically shows those applications which are available from my app catalog directly, not just from a SharePoint store. I could access the SharePoint store from here as well. And the one which has not yet been added uh, is the application customizer one. I'm going to add that to the site. Adding, adding successfully. And if I now go to the site contents, we can actually say that we have three of them now installed. Ah, but more importantly, wow, there's our awesome, awesome customizer available. Because again, the application customizer renders in all of the pages. So it doesn't matter if you are inside of the list uh, experience. Wow. It doesn't matter if you are in site contents <laughs> or, or if you are in pages. Wow. Um, wow. Okay, uh, we need to have a look on that. <laughs> now I'm confused. Uh, or in the homes, uh, we can actually see that the, the application customizer uh, is getting rendered uh, properly. And, and because that's the intention, uh, it is all the time available and getting rendered on the pages. Now, now we're still in SharePoint, but where is the Viva connection? Well, now if we go to the Microsoft Teams site, um, and I'm going to use the browser again simplicity because I mean desk, my desktop is in the session right now and we're recording the session so I can't use that. Uh, and if we refresh the page uh, we can see that of course the application customizer is getting rendered in the Microsoft Teams with the Viva Connection experience and Viva Connection extensibility here as well. So you as a customer or as a partner you design what's available and what's visible in the Viva Connection uh, which is by the way a cool uh, partner opportunity as well. So you can start designing different kind of experiences and then industry-based experiences which are then being exposed through the Viva Connection uh, in the uh, in the Microsoft Teams. Technically there's ways even to have multiple ones of this. So you could have a one which is Contoso and then Contoso the sales as a second one. Um, so there's multiple different opportunities available uh, for uh, people. Now uh, the developer tenant, by the way, does not require any premium license. Developer tenant is just free for everybody. It's E5 and easy to get this started. I think that's it. it did I miss any questions, uh, Waldek? You've been no. answering some of them. I answered all of them. They wanted to know everything. They wanted to know everything. Okay, cool. So let me go back on, on the slides. Uh, I think we have a few slides in this one still. Uh, so basically what we did in here uh, before we close up on the on the sign, we created a new solution. We created the application customizer. We tested it out and we deployed that to the tenant. And again, the cool thing about SharePoint Framework, hopefully being renamed something else pretty soon, uh, is, is that it's automatically hosted inside of Microsoft 365. Uh, so there wasn't really complexity on the deployment of that elements. Um, so a component of uh, complexity on deployment of the solution as such. Now, of course, uh, just a summary, that one, oh, the, now the person is happy. So finally, he is convinced after three of these uh, sessions. Uh, clearly, About super time. happy with with, <laughs> with how we can how we can extend the Viva uh, Connection desktop with the application customizer. It does not work in the mobile experience, so you cannot actually use that in there because again, the mobile experience is, is for adaptive card rendering options. Uh, and today we did the deployment and testing application customizer in the Viva Connection desktop. There's a few different ways of again doing that. Uh, so we did it with a, a debug uh, URL manipulation directly. Uh, there's a documentation how to do it from the serve.json as well. Um, again, matter of opinion how, how those are being done. But that's all what we're going to do within this demo. Mm -hmm.